I wouldn't recommend you do this at all, really. Calvis aren't liking the new inhabitants. Get this girl out of here. Pretty bashed up. I'm going to have to do something about it. I think we'll all learn a lesson from that. You really don't want to have to put black calvis in with white calvis. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're going to be preparing the fry tank for the Alto Lampro Lagos Calvus. They've had their six spawn. I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to be doing with that tank because I've got a couple ideas that I might change with how I raise those fry. Also, we're going to be moving some fish around the fish room because I've got a lot more fry coming through. So let's get into this week's video. Okay, so guys, the new spawn of Alto Lampro Lagos Calvus are going to go into this tank. So I'm going to prepare it for them. First thing I'm going to do is remove some of the algae off the walls and also remove the bristlenose catfish out of this tank. I don't want any bristlenose catfish in the tank when the fry are so young because I don't want them stressing the fry out, chasing them around while the fry are just pretty much newly uh, hatched, newly free swimming. So um, as you know, calvers fry, they like to hop off the surface of the tank for at least a month or two after their, fruit, after their called free swimming fry. They still like to sit on the surface, on the sand bed. So having bristlenose catfish in the tank, I think will stress them out. So I'm gonna move them out. Try not to worry about the algae growth too much during those uh, first few months the calvus are in here. And um, yeah, go from there. Once the calvus are a little bit more mature, I'll then add the bristlenose catfish. So yeah, first thing I'm gonna do on this tank is, like I said, take the bristlenose catfish out, clean the algae off the tank, uh, vacuum, the floor of this tank is seen there's quite a bit of mold on it. Take this rock out and then put in some crushed coral because the calvus, uh, they're pretty much ready to go, I think. I haven't seen any free swimming fry in the parent shell yet, but I expect that in, ha to happen in the next few days. So I just want to be ready for that. So yeah, I'm gonna, gonna move on and get this tank clean. The next thing I need to do in the fish room today is get this girl out of here because she is holding some fry, obviously, as you can see in her mouth. Uh, this is Ventralis tritica, female. There's the dad there, this blue guy. Beautiful looking fish. So she's been holding uh, for about a, oh, almost two weeks now. And I really need to get her out of here and into her own tank. You can see, if you look closely, you might be able to see the eyes on the fry that she's holding uh, in her mouth. So they're really starting to uh, fully develop pretty much. Um, so I need to make room in another fish tank for her so she could spit them out and uh, be in peace and not get harassed too much. So where I'm going to be putting her, uh, I'm going to make room for her. And the plan I have is to finally move these guys out of their aquarium. These are my black Alto Lampalogus Calvus that I purchased about two months ago now. I'm going to be moving them out of this aquarium and putting them with my other black Alto Lampralogus calvus. Now, I really want to re-aquascape this aquarium and I am going to do that in the next few weeks, uh, but I just don't have time for it today. So I'm just going to pop those black calvus in here with the existing two large calvus I have and monitor how they go. And then in the meantime, I'm going to put that female ventralis in with uh, in by herself in the tank that those black uh, calvers were in. So I'm going to do that now. Hopefully she doesn't spit out her fry in the four foot tank. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can catch her fairly quickly. So this is what the calvers tank looks like at the moment for the new fry. Half empty with uh, fresh water being pumped into it and I'm still siphoning out the mulm and uh, dirty water from this aquarium. Now in saying dirty water there really wasn't much mulm in the aquarium whatsoever uh, because there were fish in here and bristlenose catfish and because they were swimming through the mulm constantly, they were always putting that up back into the water column and then that was getting sucked down into the sump by the bulkhead. So instead of having to remove the mulm onto doing like a complete water change on this, on this tank, I've just simply draining uh, the mulm straight out of the tank down and into the first chamber of the sun. It's not going to do anything to the system. Uh, instead of exporting that nutrients out with the water change, just put it straight back into the sun. It's just going to sit there and uh, as the fish swim through that mom, it was just always going to go back down the bulkhead, but to speed the process up, I've removed it and put it into the sun myself. 
The reason why I'm being a little bit lazy today when I'm doing this is because I really I don't have much time. I've got to be quick. I want to get this done, and I don't normally do this. I wouldn't recommend you do this um, at all, really, unless uh, not not for water changes. Definitely not for water changes. Um, but if you need to, if you're in a hurry and you need to be quick, um, and it's just a small amount of mold, a small amount of fish poop, like you saw in the video, there wasn't much there, and I just scraped off the algae off the sides of the glass. Just pumping it straight back into the sump, no big deal. So what this, what what's happening now is it's recirculating, right? So water's coming in through the return line, coming into the tank, clean water from the sump. This is going back down to the sump, and I'm getting a renewed supply of clean water into this system. So because the return line's at the back of the aquarium, and my drain line at the moment is at the front of the aquarium. Water is getting pushed from the back of the aquarium to the front of the aquarium where this is completely on the opposite diagonal to where the return line is and all that dirty water is coming out of the tank and all the particulates are getting extracted from the tank because of this, because of this uh, siphon that's going directly into the first chamber, my mechanical filtration side of the sump. So this is perfect for what I want. I'm saving on water, I'm saving on time and it's killing two birds with one stone. So I can just let this be. You see it's kinda of, got a kink in the hose. So it's draining out very slowly, but it's draining out faster than it can refill. So that's fine, that's all good. Next thing I wanna show you guys. This is the black calvis tank now. I've kinda of done a little bit of a quick aquascape on it, just to uh, kinda of mess up the territories that were in here. And uh, you can probably see at the back there, the calvis aren't liking the new inhabitants. And I'm gonna to have to monitor this tank for the next 24 hours, make sure the black calvis are okay, uh, and if they uh, end up getting, you know, pretty bashed up, I'm gonna have to do something about it. But uh, you see that dominant calvis there is doesn't like doesn't like the calvis in the tank, and is trying to move it out of the, that cave. So these here's some new caves, a shell for the guys to go in if they if they need. Uh, the smaller of the two calvis is hiding behind here near a bristlenose catfish. I really hope they're gonna be okay. A little bit of an experiment. We'll see how they go. Yeah, I expect they're going to be. I expect they're going to be fine. Just once uh, they settle down over the next few hours, it should be okay. They'll work out their territories. Uh, it looks kind of uh, mean at the moment with uh, the the calvus at the back there, not liking that uh, new calvus in the tank. But things will settle down over the next few hours. I, I am sure, and uh, everyone will know their place in this tank. This is where the ventralis trichotica female is going to go. I've put some Cyrea rock at the back there just to hold that sponge filter in place so it doesn't float up. And uh, there's some bristlenose catfish in here. You can see this actually has more mole in it than the other tank did. Uh, so yeah, it's fine uh, just for recirculating that through the, through the sump, it's sitting in the aquarium anyway. And I did a uh, water change yesterday, so obviously I should have cleaned it out yesterday. I uh, just forgot, but um, instead of doing that, uh, just sucked it straight into the sump. So. All good, all is well. It's not going to cause any dramas. So, the next thing I need to do is catch that girl there. I'm going to do it now. Hopefully she doesn't spit her fry out. I've had her spit fry out in the net before. Uh, don't want to stress her out too much. I need, really need to catch her quickly and put her in the tank. We'll see how we go. That was a very successful transfer for this ventralis female. She didn't spit any of the fry out. Caught her pretty quickly, easily within the minute. Yeah, we'll see how she goes now. She can uh, relax in this aquarium, not be stressed out, getting chased around by all the other fish in that tank. And I'll just feed her baby brine shrimp every now and then. They'll feed her and um, potentially her fry that are in her mouth if they've completely absorbed their yolk sac. So I'll let her settle in, in into this aquarium. I won't disturb her for the rest of the day. I'll pop in a spoon of baby brine shrimp for her. And yeah, she'll have a little bit of a feed of that and hopefully a fry will as well. But oh uh, yeah, I'll just let it settle down now. So you can see at the back there, that is, the, at the top, that calvis was the larger of the two that I bought. And you can see the size difference with the calvis that are in here. They're, they're uh, a little bit larger than it, probably by about two to three centimeters. And they're working out who's who. It's all good. So the aggression will be spread out amongst the four calvis that are in this tank now. So that calvus there was the subdominant one out of the pair that were in this tank. But now that there's four in this aquarium, the aggression is obviously going to get spread out amongst all four. And that, that subdominant calvus 
won't be picked on as much now because the most aggressive calvus in this tank has other fish to keep its eye on. The other thing I'm considering doing is adding some female guppies into this aquarium, again to spread the aggression. They'll provide these guys with some live food as well as they have their babies. And uh, I'm just really, I'm not too concerned about this guy. I'm more concerned about this one over here. It's very, very tiny compared to the other calibers, so I'm gonna be keeping a watchful eye on this aquarium for the next few hours just to make sure everything is okay. There is ample space for the guys to hide. And again, uh, the aggression is spread, so hopefully everything will be okay. I might break my rules with this and if it doesn't work out, that calvus will go into another aquarium by itself, uh, potentially with these guys or these guys. Really don't want to have to put black calvus in with white calvus. I've said that a lot to you guys on these videos. Don't mix your white and black calvus up together because it can be sometimes difficult to tell them apart. But this calvus has this black calvus has a distinguishing feature on its face. Its uh, nose is a little got a little bit of a bump on it, and I will be easily able to identify that calvus, that one right there, from all these guys. But we'll see how we go. Okay, so you can see how clear this new calvus fry tank is looking. Water's looking very very clear. See how quickly the water's flowing in. So I'm gonna actually turn that flow down because once the calvus fry are in here that's going to be far too strong for them but uh, I'll let this tank refill and over the next day or two I'll turn that flow down and it'll be right. So it's 24 hours later guys and you can see these are the three now subdominant calvus. The guy in the middle at the bottom there is the larger of the two I recently bought. You can see how small the, uh, the smallest one is. The one on the right there, the large calvus on the right has always been in this tank and was the one that was always getting belted by the dominant calvus that's in here. As you can see all three are grouped together now. They're not um, harassing each other anywhere near as much as when I first put these two guys together in their own tank. So that, that little one was really getting picked on when it was only with uh, that larger calvus in the quarantine aquarium. And now that all three are in this aquarium with a, a dominant calvus, they're grouped together. Um, they're not picking on each other, so that's nice to see. So the main, the main calvus is here underneath this rock. You can see, uh, keeping to itself. See how it goes in the next few weeks, but things definitely have settled down. And the other benefit of introducing these guys into the aquarium is that that, that calvus there isn't getting picked on every single moment this calvus comes out of his cave. So the aggression is spread out now amongst uh, all the calvus in this tank. So you can see all the algae on the tank. The bristlenose, I thought they'd do a better job at, at eating all this algae. You can see they've started to clean off the edge of this rock here. Uh, it's looking nice and grey again, uh, but I'm not too concerned about it. I'm more concerned with the health of these guys. And yeah, it looks like after 24 hours, Everything's starting to really, really settle down. This tank's gonna get a nice upgrade. I'm gonna be obviously cleaning it if the bristlenose catfish don't get it. I move on with this and re it because I wanna make this tank look really, really nice. Just like my Neil Amprologus Lelupi Aquarium. So here's the Calvus Fry Tank, all filled up with water. Uh, next thing I need to do is put the crushed coral in and potentially move the female in here with the shell and all the fry. Still undecided what, if I'm actually going to do that. Um, I'm a little bit cautious about doing that purely because I don't want to stress the male or the female out, obviously. Uh, I don't want to stress any of the fish out, but um, I'm more concerned about breaking the bond with both cows, so um, I might just stick to what I usually do, but I really am tempted just to put the female in here and see how, see how the fry goes, see how the see how that experiment goes. I think we'll all learn a lesson from that. But yeah, I've got a couple more days to decide what I'm gonna do with that. And you can see some of the other calvus fry that I have coming out. Uh, there's a brevis in the middle there, that guy. I have no idea how that brevis got in that tank. One of the mysteries of my fish room. Um, but yeah, that's another story for another day. I'm actually uh, still trying to work out what the hell happened there. 
So there you go guys, I might try something new with the calvus spawn and I've moved some fish around in the fish room. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.